Hi all, Mark here with the Exiles, and tonight we're going to be looking at Fury's sword in one hand, or Spada and Unamano. Uh, we are hopefully going to get through the first five plays, um, so let's see where it takes us. So, first five plays of sword in one hand, okay? So the first play that Fury mentions, he shows us the, against the, the three unwise men, should we say. So he stood like this, okay? So you guys all know this, you've practiced it to death, but for the sake of this. His feet are facing the other way, and he's exposing the entire right side of his body, okay? You can wait around in this position, you can move around in this position, although, going back to earlier sentiments, really, that position is an evolution of something, right? Because you, you know, this is just a tool, right? I say this all the time. So you may have been using it in two hands or whatever, and you've just dropped in, or, it's an arm in sword or something else, but using one hand on a sword isn't you know, mutually exclusive, okay? It's just, a, it's just a tool. So, we're in this posture, okay? First guy is nice and high. He's gonna be doing a cut. Fiori says that you can beat with the passing steps. The cut comes in, I beat with the passing step. I've got loads of space, so I only need to hit him with this bit. That is a possibility from the first play. The second dude is gonna thrust, Similar principle with the passing step. I can lift this out of the way, hit the arms, hit the body, whatever I want, but I'm quite safe with my passing step. Because I keep moving, I can be safe the whole time through. Okay? And then the third dude, he's got the sword like this, because he's gonna be throwing it at you. We're not gonna do that, but let's pretend. So uh, what Fury says again is, with this passing step and with a beat, I can be perfectly safe. What keeps you safe is really the passing step, okay? Because it's gonna be very hard to collect a sword with a beat if it's thrown, okay? So that's the first play, if you like. We're gonna practice that in two ways. We're gonna do it against the cut and against the thrust. If you come to the mood at the end of September, we might do some stuff throwing swords around. Um, but it's as simple as that. So you guys will practice this as part of the beats drill, yeah? So cut comes in, coming up. I'm stopping at my shoulder. I'm not letting the point go too far back because I want it to be one, a visible threat, and two, I don't want it to take ages. So I've made my beat, boom, cut back down. You've all done this absolutely to the death, but we'll start there. It's a bit of an additional warm up just to get your eye in, okay? Cool bits. So um, it's the offline movement, really, this increase, this passing with the front foot that really supports whatever action you're going to do, to be honest, on that side. Whether it's uh, against the cut, yeah, there we go, or whether it's against the high-ish thrust, it's the feet that give me the space that open it up. So in principle, if I'm stood here and he just thrusts at me, in principle it's the feet. Obviously you're not going to rely on just the feet, okay? Um, so bear in mind your feet. Also, just again for the more newer students just bear in mind when you've done an action it's a good idea to carry on into something else okay so if i'm taking let's just from whatever from a cut doesn't matter front foot comes off feet comes up this comes down to wherever 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 don't just stop and reset yourself okay because it, it gets you into bad habits ideally what you want to do is you be a cut back and just keep moving all right because it just it just gets you used to moving into a safe space otherwise what will happen is when you spar or whatever You'll do this, and you'll hit, or you'll miss, or you'll cover, and you used to stop it, and it's that, oh, what the fuck moment. Yeah, so just initially, get used to moving. For more experienced people, you guys can do whatever. Hit them, close, whatever, whatever, yeah? Okay, second play, which Fiori shows, his left foot is forward, and he's got the sword high like this, and it's against a cut of a pendente from your opponent, okay? So the, the posture's still down here nice and low, okay? He can start wherever, um, and we're passing through with that left foot and we're closing. We're going on the inside now. So this is against the Fernando to my left shoulder from his right. As the cut comes in, what he always shows is a cover, sorry, that's out here like this. Now there's a couple of different ways to take this kind of cover, okay? Just as part of the general use of sword in one hand. You can go to the inside or the outside. So if we're going to the inside, I'm coming up and through like this. If I'm feeling particularly bold, as long as I'm protecting my whole body with, against that cut, I can bring this cover right the way through, and you're all used to doing this, okay? To start off with, cut comes in, I'm just bringing the sword up nice and high, and just get used to, for argument's sake, just clearing this, and just, sending, and just line it up with thrust, okay? 
Okay, but have a play around with it. There's no hard and fast rules. Uh, go to this side. Go to this side too. Just see what happens. Yeah. But the actual play, the actual technique, is up on the inside, like this. I'm clearing through, lining up my thrust, whatever, whatever. Coming forward with the left foot. Okay. There's no hard and fast rules with this, as I say. Move around. Feel it for yourself. Go for it. So a couple of things about the second play we cover. Okay. Specifically says about covering makes a good cover. Specifically says about putting the point onto the face, and it specifically says ideally with the left arm you want to put that sword to ground. Okay. How we initially teach this play isn't what it ultimately becomes. Okay. The main things for me. Apart from the three things that Fury says, is that I don't get hit with that weapon. Okay, so I'm here. I mean, whatever I've done before is irrelevant. I've either started like this or I've ended up in this position. I'm inviting in a big attack. Okay, the actual picture. If we swap sides, sorry. The actual picture. If you stick your sword halfway through an action and just stop there, the actual picture seems to suggest the swords are untangled. Okay, it's not like this. We do do covers like this. Of course we do. As you all know that. But the picture is actually, it looks like it's like this, okay? As I said, the main thing for me is that I do a cover. So no matter where I'm going to go, I'm always covering my whole body throughout a full range of motion. So that at no point will I catch it here, will I catch it there. However I catch it, I'm always completely safe. And because of the picture, we believe that it's actually like this, okay? Because my sword isn't crossed on the other side, it's here. It's positioned for a thrust like Fury shows. And I've got this control of the arm with my left hand and my left foot's forward, okay? So this is what I feel is the most likely outcome for this play. I'm doing all the things he says. I've positioned my point to his face for a thrust and I'm pushing that away or across just to clear that line, okay? I just wanted to make that clear. Initially when you're learning this, especially when you do like the covers drill and things like that, you'll do these covers, just do the covers drill and cut around. You'll do these covers all, in, all different, in all different ways, covers drill. Yeah, as you guys well know. But what you'll know from this covers drill is that if you fluff something up, let's say you cut it again, if I don't catch that right, it doesn't matter. I'm always, I'm always safe with that cover. And that's the main thing to remember. So to recap, ultimately it becomes this. I'm quite safe throughout the entire action. I've stepped offline, I've made a really good cover in case there's any contact. There's my thrust, there's my palm of the hand. Of course we never know for sure, but that works really, really well and fits in with the manuscript. Okay. Third play. Fury says, in all things I find you uncovered and I've wounded your head for sure. Okay? We initially we teach, we teach this as another B. Okay, what we do is we say, there's your B, there's my cuts, I've wounded your head for sure. Okay? Uh, the actual picture is like this, on the getting anyway. It's like this. Okay? Um, it could be from a cover, it could be from where anything else. Again, ultimately this becomes, whenever I find you uncovered, um, I can do this kind of action. So if it is a cover, and perhaps I'm a little bit, my distance is quite far and the thrust is a bit predictable for it, I could do this as well as I move off or whatever. So just to make the clarification, in the first play when he talks about the B, he doesn't talk about the action to do after, so he just says that I can beat it up the way of the passing step. He doesn't mention about hitting the back really. So, we train this initially as one, two. This is the image. Wounded your head for sure. And it's on this side of the sword. His arm's a little bit bent. So that, 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 that's it. Okay? So we still train this as a beat. Okay? Good. Yeah. So on to the next play, fourth play. Fury mentions hurting you with cuts and thrusts. And he talks about with an adjustment of the front foot, I can apply Ligadura Etsana, which he also references the fact that it's from the First Master Dagger, which is, you know, he says the third player first Master Dagger. So we all know Ligadura Mitsana, um, now we apply it with a sword, basically. So the key things with this is that, again, you start with this one hand sword thruster, the cup comes in, and you're coming forward, you're passing with the left foot, okay? Now, the arm actually looks like this, you can just see in the Getty that he's just sneaking his hand into here, okay? From here, this line is very closed. By that, what I mean is our arms are in front of our bodies. Okay, you all know that Ligadura Mixana looks like this. Okay, in the dagger especially. Now, to open that line, what I need to do is bend the arm to 90 degrees, but adjust my front foot so that I bring the arm up like this. I'm maintaining the cover the whole time. 
And what you'll see here is that, if you can exactly where it is, I've got absolutely loads of space now. Before, I didn't. We were covered, very hard to apply anything from here. If I just snake forward and try and apply ligadura, it's not gonna happen, because I can't bend my arm that way very easily. And we can do it now, because it's really slow. So, I've covered up and I'm here, left foot forward. Now adjust my front foot to basically chicken wing this arm, it's sticking right out there, maintaining the pressure of the cover. The arm goes in and down it goes, okay? That is ligadura. I'm not gonna keep him there for very long. I can try and injure and wound or whatever, unlikely. I'm only keeping him there long enough to hurt, to hit him back, to thrust, whatever. Key thing here, for those of you who are a bit more experienced, with the dagger, you throw yourself away, okay? With this, for some weird reason, it's better to lean forward, okay? Because I'm not really trying to hold him there for very long, as I say. I lean forward, I apply that pressure, bosh, 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 whatever I want. Thrust and twist, whatever I want, okay? So just very quickly, one hand saw across the cut comes in, I come up and forward. The arm's a bit low, so if I was doing this for real, or sparring or whatever, I wouldn't try this because I can't get underneath it and just turn and do something else. So just even up a bit high where it should be, adjustment of the front foot, look at that, perfect. No problem at all, gosh. That is ligadura. 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Away from the body where it's, it's most painful. Don't let it collapse because it's not gonna hurt. Don't let it straighten because it's not gonna hurt. 90 degrees, right there, lovely. Bosh. Have a go. In the fourth plate, he talks about cutting and thrusting and he has control with his left arm of the sword. He then says in the fourth plate that with that passing step which we did, a little increase, you can apply Ligadura Mixana. Then he shows Ligadura Mixana as the fifth plate. So Marky, being Marky, has just gone to the natural evolution of the fourth plate. What we can do is come back to the fourth plate and do a, a drill, if you like, because he shows he's got control of this arm, okay? And he says about cutting and thrusting, wounding you, yeah? So we're gonna do an exercise because the cover and the control and manipulation of a sword arm with one hand on the sword, or two, but in this instance one, is really, really key, okay? Because if you can, if you can manage to conduct yourself, your fight, whatever, take a cut, cover it, control the arm, okay? That is like half of a one-handed sword fight. If you can do this really well, twist, manipulate, strike, thrust, cut, you've got a pretty good basis for being reasonably good in one hand on the sword. So we're actually going to do it as an exercise. You're going to cover to this point, and from whatever you do from here, let's make it a game. So my objective is to control the arm by giving it a twist, like the first master of dagger, first play, first master of dagger, to make a twist and hit him in any way that I see fit. It can be a little thrust, be gentle, it can be a cut, whatever. So that's my objective. Your partner's objective is to deny this by moving or trying to resist it or whatever. Okay, just start off with your one-handed sword posture. Come up, take a firm grip. As soon as that's on, he's gonna resist and I'm gonna attack. Yeah, cool. And just make a game out of it, okay? My objective is to turn and hit. His objective is to grab, twist, move away, whatever. Just make it into a drill, a game, an exercise. This is a really important principle. This is the fourth play. The fifth plate is the Ligadura, which he mentions in the fourth plate, about going on to it, okay? Even if you only did the manuscript to remind himself this stuff. So, to help with the l application of the Ligadura, <laughs> they've given the guys some principles to follow, and now they're doing a mass exercise. Random attacks, without a sword. The guys are looking for the right angle, and just applying Ligadura. Bit of group fun, bit of group practice. <laughs> so uh, that was the first five plays of one handed, okay? So sides. Quick recap. So first master, first play is like this. He's doing a beat and an offline movement against the guy with the cup. Bosh. Against the guy who's thrusting, offline, and I'm beating up. Oh, missed that. Doesn't matter. Football keeps the same. Thrust on target. Up. Bosh. And he's doing it against a guy that throws a sword. Play one. <laughs> play two is some cover, lots of different variations. He ends up well offline, 
well protected at any point, so I'm good. If that is a bit more oblique, or let's say it's a, a slightly more messana like, yeah, I'm safe the whole time. But the cover's the same, okay? Here, he talks about, left foot forward, he talks about aiming to push this to ground, thrust, uh, no problem at all. You do on the outside as well? Sorry? You do on the outside as well? Uh, yeah, you can do, yeah, yeah, you can cover this way too, which is just basically the same action. Basically the same action. Then we've got the third play, which I was going to show you, which is in all things I find you uncovered. So, which is back to the beat again, but obviously it's focusing on the attack. And that doesn't just happen from a beat, it can happen from a cover or wherever. In all things I found you uncovered, and I've wounded your head for sure. Fourth play, cut back in. Here, this is the image that it shows with the left hand on the arm and he talks about cutting and thrusting. So like we just did with that exercise, the whole principle of this is a control and manipulation of this arm and different, different options for when I've got control of that arm. But effectively it's like a first master, first dagger, uh, first master, first dagger, the first play of first master dagger turn. And then the fifth play is the evolution of fourth, which is the application of the so arm up, I'm moving into it, getting that one, that is lovely. Loads of control. Okay, so the first part plays one handed a sword. One handed sword. I can't speak today. So, the important thing with this is that it's all really about closing and controlling and the manipulation of the arms. Okay, um, you're not really going to conduct yourself for very long out here. Distance, you can, but with one hand on a sword, less power, less speed, very hard to react to stuff. Um, and it's also Fury's way of showing you what to do when you're close, so it's building the layers of the system. Okay? Because if you get shit hot by applying all this with one hand on a sword, let's say Ligatura or whatever, you could be damn sure that when you start this arm with two hands and closing into Jocko Stretto, you're already used to manipulating arms and pushing in things, etc. etc. So it's a natural build-up of all of these things that are going on. Cool. Done.